Hello, it's Keith here and this is Lesson 3 of the Easy 80 series of programming tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at in and out commands. We're going to be working out how we can even use the bleeding things on the Tidy 4, I'll explain why in a moment. And we'll be looking at a few of the new interesting ones and just briefly discussing all of the range that are available. Now there's a wide range of available for in and out and a lot of them do weird and new and exciting things. However, they're a bit difficult to use on the Tidy because the hardware available to us isn't necessarily in the um, configuration that we're going to need some of the commands for but we're going to at least mention they're there and see a few of them and we'll see uh, how we can get around the problem with the tie now the problem is the tie 84 calculator will actually reset if we try and do any of the operations to these ports um, the problem is uh, basically the hardware will run a, an NMI interrupt which is a non-maskable one we can't stop it when a operation to a port occurs and stop us from testing those ports I've worked out a trick around it, you see. Now we can't write to that and um, replace that NMI interrupt handler, but what we can do is we can switch to classic Z80 mode and then set our own memory range and the NMI will run to memory address 66 within our memory range and then we can put our own interrupt handler in there. We'll be running in classic Z80 mode, not easy 80 mode, but um, it won't matter for the simple commands we're trying. The commands all still work in the Z80 mode, it's just we don't have access to the full 24-bit registers. So um, I, I think this is going to be good enough for some testing and we'll have a play with the commands. Now what's actually changed with the easy 80 and with the ports? Well. One of the most significant things is the classic Z80 was often using 8-bit ports. The official documentation we often referred to out C, and C in brackets, which meant that the ports were 8-bit. But depending on the hardware configuration, systems like the Amstrad CPC, um, the Sam Coupe and a few others in places, the ports were actually 16 bits. With the Easy 80, I believe the ports are now always 16 bits. So um, we've actually got some new special commands which are designed to work with 16 bits and um, before we were using out BC, but that would often cause problems where B was being used as a loop counter if we were using 16-bit ports. Well, we now have new commands that use other registers in some cases. We use DE as the port number, so that that's not a problem anymore. So we're going to discuss the new commands very briefly, but the other thing is as well as that benefit, the Easy 80 at least in some cases, now has some hardware built into the um, chip. I think it's one of these system on chip things where some extra hardware has been bolted onto the Easy 80 um, and that uses the top byte of the new 16-bit port as double zero. And this will be things like an internal counter for a clock and things. And so to allow for the quick working with those, there are some new commands where the top byte is a double zero. So this is another thing that we've got available for it and I've um, sort of compiled them in this little chart here. So you can see we've got some new commands and th these all basically have an in version and an out version. So whether we're reading from the port or writing to the port. And you can see we've got all kinds of weird new stuff here like in zero and out zero. And these will read and write from a port starting with the top byte of the 16-bit port as double zero, uh, the two double zero nibbles. So that's that one there. And then we've got other ones here in D2 and out D2. These will use the port BC um, and you can see also there are some uh, commands going on here. Sometimes some very strange commands. I mean uh, we're using BC as a port there but we're decreasing C and B. I have no idea why you would want to do that. I'm sure there's a very good reason. It's just um, one I can't think of. It's certainly not one I'm going to be testing today because as I say we can only work with the ports that are available to us on the TI-84 calculator. But you can see as well we've got commands like OT dr2 and in dr2 these instead of using bc as the port use de as the port and that's because they use bc as the loop counter which is very sensible so these are some very nice new things available to us so we've got a lot of these and um, as i say if you see here we've got this nice chart here so if you want to quickly check what's available to us um, please take a look at the chart and hopefully it will explain what are the port is what the memory the destination that's being transferred to and the commands that are occurring and if there is a loop what that loop is of course all of the classic commands are available as well so we've got lots of commands let's go over to our source code and let's have a play with the tie 84 hardware and it's let's have a go at its ports so to speak okay 
So the first thing we're doing here is we are going to set mixed mode because we're working with the classic Z80 mode. As I say, we can't use the ADL mode and get access to those ports. And we're just setting the system up and then we're calling a short subroutine, test 8-bit out, and this will switch to ADL zero mode and it will um, start the testing. Okay, well, what are we gonna do? Well, we need to change memory address 66. This is going to be our NMI interrupt handler and we're just setting it to the bytecode that is a return n command. So that will return from the NMI interrupt, basically neutering it, making it will no longer have that effect of locking up the machine on us and stopping us having our fun. So we're, what we're going to do first is a very simple test. We're gonna just show the contents of that memory just in case we wanna see it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a 16-bit port because as I say, all of our commands now make sense. Before out bracket C bracket comma A on a 16-bit port system like the Amstrad would have actually done out B C comma A, which is very annoying. Well, now the command actually looks like what it is. So it, this is going to out the value 255 to port B024. So that's going to be very good. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to alter the backlight. So let's try it out. Well, you can see our backlight has indeed gone pretty dim there. So maybe that has worked. Well, let's find out. Let's try changing it to a different value. Let's change it to 128 from 255. And let's run again and see what happens to our backlight this time. There we go, it's a lot brighter. So we're able to now control the backlight via port B024 using this, um, it looks like a new command, but it's actually the old out bracket C comma A command. It just now states the new function, which is a 16-bit port. So that's how we can write to a 16-bit port. And we can, of course, read from one as well. Here we're reading from port 0001. Now, this is actually the CPU speed, and it gives a value from 0 to 3 for 6, 12, 24, or 48. And we're reading into our D register here. Well, what does our D register contain? Well, our D register contains a value of three there. What is a value of three? Well, a three is a quite juicy 48. Okay, well, we can, of course, read that in by using the in command, but we can also use the new snazzy in zero command, which automatically sets the top byte of the 16-bit port to a zero. So here we're loading in E from the same port from 0001. And you can see over here that the E register has also been set to the same value. We can also out to a zero top byte port. So here we're outing to 0001 and we're writing a one, which is going to make our processor very slow, a mere 12 megahertz. Which, well, back in the classic Z80 days, that was pretty fast, but now we've got this 48 megahertz and now we've got this massive 16 bit screen. It's actually not that fast at all, unfortunately. We've uh, we've kind of eaten up all the screen speed with our um, new screen. So you will notice that's quite slow if you drop back to the operating system. I've got a, a halt command at the end of my test code so that um, so that it keeps showing on the screen while I'm talking about them. That was a problem on the first episode. So if you remove that, then you will see that the operating system becomes quite clunky and painful, unfortunately, because like most modern stuff, it doesn't use processing power very efficiently. So 48 megahertz suddenly isn't so much anymore. Anyway, we can um, we can slow down the process if we're trying to save some power. OK, so that's how we can do some testing and set up an NMI to allow us to actually use these ports. Now, what we're going to do this time is we're going to set the processor even slower to a mere six megahertz. The reason we're going to do this is we're going to do some incremental reading commands. We're going to read blocks of ports uh, in different ways and we're going to write them to some memory and then we're going to show that memory to the screen and we don't want it to show to the screen too fast because it would be quite boring. So we're going to slow down the processor so that we see some more interesting stuff. We're going to be writing to the memory address 1000 within the uh, range that our Z80 is working in because we've switched to classic Z80 mode and we're going to show those bytes to the screen. So what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try a command Let's try the command INI2R. Now this will transfer BC bytes from port DE to address HL and it will increment DE and HL. So we're going to effectively transfer hexadecimal 40 bytes from port A000 onwards to memory address 1000 onwards in hexadecimal and we're going to transfer it to memory and we're going to see the results. 
let's just bring that one out and let's check this out. So, what is hexadecimal A000? Well, it's the keyboard. We're reading in from the keyboard. So if I just start up the program here, you're going to see a lot of data on the screen here, and some of it is changing. You can see some of it's changing, and that's a, a test we're going to see in a moment, so just ignore that for now. Let's have a look at this area here, and if I press some keys on the keyboard, and it's very slow because of that 6 megahertz, so you can see here, as I'm pressing the space, it's changing to a 1, and as I'm releasing the space, it's changing to a 0. If I press it, other keys, maybe I'll see different bits change. You can see there. So we are indeed reading from the keyboard there. Now, if you actually want to see what those mean, then you, you need to look at some code, some documentation online on the keyboard matrix. I'm not covering how to program the TIE-84 calculator in this series. I'm just covering how to use the EZ80. It's just a convenient way of doing it. So that's the INI2R command. That will transfer from ports DE onwards to HL onwards. If you prefer, you can use the IND2R command which will decrement DE and HL after each time. So we can do the reverse with those values there and in to R. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to do another command. Now, this one was reading from different ports each time. DE, the port source, was going up each time. Well, what about if we want to read from a single port and read lots of data from that port? Well, we have a new command that can do that. That's INI RX. This will read from port DE and only the value in DE, so 6001 every time, but we will transfer 40 bytes in 40 bytes in hexadecimal from 1040 in HL onwards, so 1040, 1041, and so on, but always from port 6001. So we're transferring a sequence of bytes here, and that will effectively read in. Now, what we're reading in is a timer. We're turning on a timer here by writing a 1 to port 6. 00C, and that is going to enable a timer, and we're going to see how that timer changes over time because we're going to load in hexadecimal 40 bytes each time. And here you can see those values that you see they're constantly changing and they're gradually going down there. This is the data we're reading in from the timer port 6001, and you can see as we're reading it over and over again, it's changing over time, and you can see it's actually changing you know, during this read in command. And that's the benefit of slowing down our processor, because if our processor was running at full speed, uh, it probably wouldn't change during that actual read. So you wouldn't be able to see what was going on there. So that's what we're doing there. Now, as I say, there's lots of other commands. And unfortunately, a lot of them, there wasn't any realistic ways for me to easily test. You know, you, you've got all of these kind of fascinating commands that will do things like um, use a 16-bit port BBCC, and decrease C and decrease B. Uh, you, I'm not, I can't quite get around my head what configuration of ports you would want to do that on, but I couldn't see anything in the TIE-83's limited hardware that would allow me to test that, so we're not going to. But one last thing we are going to do is we're going to try the INEMR command. Now, this will use the port C and a, a count in B, and it will transfer a sequence of bytes basically from a 16-bit port where the top byte is a 0 and the bottom byte is C, and it will use HL onwards, and it will use B bytes. So this is very much like an out IR command on the original um, Z80s on an 8-bit port system, sort of a bit like that. And basically what we're doing is we're reading in from a bunch of the low hardware registers, probably, as I say, maybe playing with our life a little bit if we we're using this on real hardware, so please don't. But, uh, you know, we're OK doing this on our test system. And so those are the values there. So you've got an 03 and then an 00. The, the double O there after the 3, that will be our CPU speed, I think. And say so these are just basically some of the values you can see in the low port numbers. Again, just a test that we're able to do on this system using this command here. Anyway, that is all we're covering here, and that is actually all I'm going to be covering on the EZ80. Now, as I've said before, you need to know Classic Z80, and if you want to support my channel and you want to see more of this kind of content, you can buy my book. It's called Learn Multi-Platform Assembly with Chibi Akamas, covers Z80, 68,086 and ARM. And if it um, continues to do as well as it has so far, then I will do a sequel which will cover the EZ80 as part of the new set of processors. So if you want to see that, please consider buying the book. And if you've liked this series, if you found it useful and you 
you want to see more EZ80 and more TIE84 calculator, please hit the like and subscribe and that kind of thing. Because if, if these were popular, I will make some tutorials and maybe a few little games on the TIE84. But it's another system to cover, so I'm covering so many. It's a lot of work, so I, I do need to know people who are enjoying it. Anyway, I hope you've liked what you've seen today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.